What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Gunlocked. Gunlocked is effectively what would happen if you took Vampire Survivors and you mixed it with something like Ikaruga or like Solar Strikers or any of those types of games. So like cosmetically when you take a look at the game it's going to look like a standard shoot 'em up but it's a standard shoot 'em up that's folded in all the ideas from vampire survivors that is to say you are in a top down spaceship the map is scrolling past you enemies are also flying past you and firing bullets and there's meteors and everything else and along the way you're going to be leveling up and picking up upgrades and finding new weapons that you're going to be upgrading until they become ridiculously overpowered and start giving you like fat screen wipes and whatever. And so anyways, Gunlocked is a very, very unique little title. I don't know if I've ever quite played anything like it. There's a lot of games out there right now that are barking up the Vampire Survivor's tree. This is one that, in my opinion, definitely goes its own way and tries to hybridize that with another style of gameplay. So anyways, if after watching this you wanted to check the game out, get it for yourself, the game is in early access as of right now. All the content is not in the game. It's in .43, as you can see from my screen right now. Uh, but I will have that link for you down below in the description. On top of that, you can find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream in case you wanted to hang out live. But let's not eat up too much of our 25 minutes right here talking. Let's go ahead and get on into a new game. So at the beginning of the game, you've got to make some selections. You've got to pick your pilot. Uh, your pilot in this game has the exact same utilitarian function as the character selection inside Vampire Survivors. Every single pilot in this game basically functions differently. They all start out with a different weapon. They all kind of mechanically work differently. I'll give you some examples here so that you can kind of process that. Scout is the guy on the left. He has what's called the gun lock, which is what the game, the game is named after. Basically, it's a sonar pulse that goes like ping around your ship, and anything inside that ping gets locked on, and then like a second later, it fires missiles at everything that was locked. And, and so that's where this game really seems to excel, is that all the weapons in this game are actually super weird, and they all force you to kind of play the game differently on a fundamental level. Uh, in the case of Artemis right here, she has the light rail. The light rail locks onto a target in front of you and then fires a laser at it. Uh, so it's very, very good for single target, but like you got to find some other stuff to support it once the screen starts getting really, really busy. And then there is Badger, who has the pulse cannon. You can imagine the pulse cannon is basically a windshield wiper on the front of your ship that's firing machine gun bullets. It goes back and forth and just goes da 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 but it never fires in one direction like the entire time. Time, it's spraying bullets kind of in a fan motion back and forth and that's what I mean is every single gun in this game plays differently and that's actually really really nice because that's kind of hard to pull off uh, we'll start out with Scout since he's got the gun lock I haven't beaten the game with Scout yet I have beaten it with Artemis but with Scout I haven't quite done it yet and I think that he has one of the most iconic attack types that really gets the idea across of what the game is all about I mean, they did name the game after it, after all, and so we'll take him. On top of that, every single character starts out with a starting perk. On ours, it looks like your next gunlock sweep, this will auto-lock onto a random enemy at any range, and then it's got a 10-second recharge. Okay, good to know. Uh, all of these other things are things that I have unlocked. Some of these are only available to other pilots as, like, their starting ability. Uh, one thing that I would say is maybe, like gray these out or like black these out because these can't be selectable. I actually fiddled with this menu for a little while being like, okay, how does it work? And basically you get to pick a couple perks to go alongside the one that you start out with. This is effectively the game's meta progression, uh, the stuff that you're unlocking in between runs. And so it took me a minute because I was like clicking on these and I was like, well, I want to take these right here because you start out with them, but you can't. Uh, they're only for the specific pilot that they unlock on. And I assume that that's supposed to be sort of shown off by the yellow that's around this versus the green that's around these but it took me a minute to realize and actually read through and figure out why I couldn't equip it and so it might be a good idea just to put a red X across it or something else like that uh, to denote to the player that they can't equip that the high rollers an extra reroll for every 15,000 points okay uh, Kineto beam moving around charges up a beam attack when full a massive blast of energy releases from your ship Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah, let's do one of those. And then the junk drone is actually pretty good, too. It puts scrap all over the battlefield. 
and as we're picking up scrap on the battlefield, it, pil it fills up a little meter, and once the meter is full, it summons a drone that basically carpet bombs the entire map, which is pretty fun. Uh, you can also choose a ship cosmetic. I'm assuming that more of these are going to be added for right now. They are just recolors of the little frogman ship that you have, but there are a lot of slots here, and so I hope they do get the time to put in like a whole bunch of different shapes, you know, triangles, squares, Things that look like freighters, things that look like fighters, things that look kind of like aliens, stuff like that. But I can wait and see. For right now, I've been playing as the little silver frog ship because I feel like he's got it going on. All that stuff selected and out of the way, let's go ahead and deploy. Uh, the game controls very, very simply. Apparently, I haven't defeated nine hive queens across all games, but I feel like I have. I've played for like two hours, and I feel like I've beaten the first level a lot of times. And so, like... It's weird to me that I have not killed nine Hive Queens yet, but I'm going to suspend my disbelief for right now, and we'll just get on in here. Uh, this game controls entirely with your left hand, W-A-S and D. That's pretty much it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start gun locking some of these little guys right here. There we go. So there's our gun lock, and when it finishes its rotation, it fires a bullet at them. And just like when you're playing Vampire Survivors, they're going to drop little crystals or little XP nodes, basically, that are going to allow you to level up and make your ship stronger. For right now, we can only lock three targets with the gun sweep, and then we get an extra shot based on that aimbot perk that we have. Ooh, there's the death ray right there. Enjoyed that. Actually never ran that perk before. There's our first level up, so we got to pick what we want. The game is divided up into four active weapons and four active utilities. Uh, the augments are what we started out with. So we want to be very, very careful. We want to come up with basically an array of weapons that complement one another and cover for each other's weaknesses. Uh, so our first choice is the Sentry Drone. A drone rotates around you, locking onto a nearby unshielded enemy and fires rapid 10 damage homing missiles at them. Okay, we've got the radar array. Uh, this will make it so that every single lock-on ability can target one more enemy. We've also got beams of energy detonate on two targets in front of your ship, dealing 26 damage to enemies in the target area and burning them. That sounds rad. I want that. Let's take that. One nice little quality of life thing that the game has is whenever you go to, like, level up, basically, and you come out of your level up, uh, having effectively, like, chosen what it is that you want to add to your ship, uh, it gives you like a little two, three second window before the game starts playing again, which I actually really, really, really like. I can't tell you how many times that just being kind of like careless while leveling up in Vampire Survivors has gotten me killed. And so anyways, I really, really like that. We will continue clearing these on out. I know the game doesn't look like much right now, but I promise you when we get further on into the game, it's going to get pretty hectic and chaotic. This game's kind of a slow burner in that most of the crazy stuff is kind of like backloaded uh, basically into the last five minutes of the level from my timing i think the levels are about 15 minutes long we can get a radar array that would be a good idea we've got the disruptor when an enemy trap is within range you release a pulse of energy around your ship that disables all traps okay and when it upgrades it destroys shields too we also have the hail mary a target appears moving left and right with you it locks onto and fires homing flares in an unshielded enemy in the area the further you are the more the flare does i'll probably take the radar array lock on for right now uh, it feels like a solid play to me we're not getting a whole lot of purchase at the moment out of our little weapon that we have equipped that's like pinging but i'm assuming those circles are gonna get like much much larger as we get further on into the game there's a buff right there we are now invulnerable those red things that you're seeing on screen those are ion bombs uh, when we blow them up or when we go near them they will detonate which basically makes it so all of your weapon systems go offline for a couple seconds it's not immediately important right this second it doesn't really matter but later on it becomes critically important that you not get hit by those once the screen gets a lot busier a few more XP to go around there we go just keep sweeping there we go perfect and there's a little bit more chaos to be thrown out those little cogs that you're seeing uh, those are a function of our scrap drone if you look down to the bottom left you'll see the scrap drone icon right here that little meter is filling up whenever we pick up scrap and when it fills up our drone gets deployed uh, we can get a scouting drone we've already seen that i think we can also get a sentry drone or we can get a disruptor I kind of like the idea of the Disruptor to get rid of enemy traps. So I'm going to give that a go, especially since I've never run it before. 
There we go. Give me the death ray right there. We gotta buff up that death ray. That death ray is not death raying at a proficiency that I would prefer. Like I need that I need that death ray to bring itself up to the next level. If I'm gonna death ray, I need to be excited about death raying. That's one of the fundamental rules of death raying. Uh, we can also get a light rail. That's the weapon that Artemis starts with. It fires directly in front of you every couple of seconds. Just pew, 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 pew. And it, it does a lot of damage. Uh, it basically one-shots whatever's in front of you. We can also get the backdraft, which means that we fire bullets behind us. That's not a bad weapon for Scout because he tends to have to advance higher up on the board in order to get locks. So it's not terrible. Uh, we also have the shock bomb. Uh, basically, it does the same thing that our other targeting thing does. It puts targeting circles in front of you. They lock in, and then it drops bombs on that spot. I'm going to go for the light rail for right now because I think it gives us a little bit more active targeting that we can play around with, and it buffs up pretty well, too. Like, we've got stuff going forward. We've got stuff going backwards now. We've got stuff going in front of us. Like, basically, I'm just trying to create a nice, healthy grid of fire so that once the game gets really, really busy and hectic, uh, we aren't, like, ducking and dodging like crazy. We can also get the Ray Palm. When a beam weapon damages an enemy, all enemies in an area are burned. We have two beam weapons, so that's got good synergy. We'll go ahead and take it. All right, a little bit of that right there. Let's charge up our drone a tiny bit. Uh, that's a repair right there. That's HP, in case you were wondering. That's an upgrade spot. If you stay on top of it for an amount of time, it'll upgrade one of your modules a level. And it looks like it actually upgraded our gun lock, which is great. That's actually going to allow us to target a lot more enemies. Uh, we've got the feedback loop. When force effects hit enemies, feedback, looter, or feedback loops meter charges up. When the meter's full, the feedback loop will fill the recharge meter of one random weapon by 24%. That seems a little complicated. I'm not going to go for it. We also have the accelerant right here. If an enemy dies by burning... They have a chance to explode. I'm going to re-roll this one, I think. Let's see what we get. So we've got the sideline. A cannon appears randomly on the left or right side of the ship and charges up an attack. Fires a 20 damage beam of force energy that damages and knocks all enemies back that it passes through. Okay. We've got the magnetosphere. Uh, this is basically a track door, but just lets us pick up stuff from further away. Or we can make it so that our ray palm is a little bit stronger. I'll probably go for sideline. I don't know how this is going to play out, but I'm being experimental right now since I've already, like, beaten this level. And so let's, let's, let's fiddle with it a bit. We do seem to be putting down a lot more murder right now. Uh, it seems like death becomes us at the moment. We'll get as much damage off as we can from our burn effects. All right, give me a little bit more of a kill right there. And as you can see, the gunfire starts to become... A little bit more intense like you start to have a lot more things going on it's just kind of like the payoff is nested a little bit further into the levels in this game another level up we've got the pressure cooker we don't have any force effects except for that gun right there the refractor beam weapons have a 20% chance to bounce to nearby targets for 25% of the damage or there is a 10% chance that when an enemy dies they launch four bullets in random directions I like both of these both of these like this one has really good synergy because we're rocking two different beam weapons I think yeah, we do have two different beam weapons. Let's go for the refractor. We'll see how often it triggers. I don't, I don't know how often it's going to trigger, but we'll give it a go. Uh, we just kind of want to swish, swish, sweep that thing across the battlefield real quick. A little bit of a tight squeeze right there that I'd rather not be in, but we managed to sneak on through. The big secret to games like this, if you're not good at them, I grew up playing Solar Striker a lot on my Game Boy. It was one of the only Game Boy games that I had. The big secret to games like this, don't pay attention to anything that your ship is doing. Just pay attention to enemy bullets and pay attention, you know, to where your beams are going and everything else. Uh, we can get our radar array upgraded or we can make sideline recharge faster. Light rail can get a 25% speed increase. Let's go for the speed increase on the front of the ship. I found that my success in this game can be very much predicated on whether or not I can keep the field clear in front of my ship, basically. A little bit more XP to be had right there. A little power-up that we picked up. I think it makes us deal, like, extra damage or something. I'm not exactly sure how it works. That, that power-up I haven't gotten to the bottom of just yet. Ooh, that was a nice little sweep right there. I'll take that one. That one actually worked out better than I expected it to. Perfect. Let's keep working on them. Let's keep working on them. 
I don't know if I can destroy that in time, but destroying the asteroids, they do have a lot of HP. But if you blow them up, they do drop a lot of XP too. And so anyways, uh, here's the first boss that shows up. There's not a lot of boss variety right now in the game. Uh, there's pretty much only like this boss that I've seen so far. So there's no randomization there. I would recommend uh, that they actually have randomized bosses all the Binding of Isaac. Uh, so instead of it always being the Hive Queen, uh, when you get to the boss portion, it should be like randomized. There should be like two or three different bosses you have to deal with, uh, with different strategies, you know, like different weapons that are a little bit better or a little bit worse versus that boss. It'd be kind of nice just to mix things up a tad. In fact, we're going to repeat this boss fight like three times during the course of this level. I'm assuming it's just a placeholder, uh, but long term, since you fight three bosses on a given level, Having the boss repeat itself three times is not exactly incredibly stimulating, and so I would recommend that maybe they come up with a few, like, basically like five to six bosses per level that can be randomly sprinkled in and you never know quite what you're going to get, I think would be the best way to go with it. Refractor, yes, let's make the refractor a little bit stronger. It now has a higher chance to trigger, and it's got much more range on the hop, skip, and jump. So that'll be good. Uh, there's a power-up container right there. Any enemy you see that has a little bubble around their ship, uh, that means that they have a shield. And what shielding basically does is shielding makes it so that weapons that rely on target lock in order to acquire uh, will not lock onto anything that's shield is actively working at the moment. And so you do want to knock out other weapons that target manually, like the Nova Beam that we've got or whatever. Those will knock down shields. Like if you see me target this guy on the left, there we go. You see how my little fire beam knocked out his shield? Anything that doesn't lock on tends to knock out the shield, but you know. Let's go ahead and... Let's upgrade the light rail for right now because I feel like it's doing the most work for us. Like, I feel like the light rail is being very reliable right now. Just good, solid, same spot every time positional damage which is kind of what we need. Those little chasers are out here too, and they can be really, really dangerous. Uh, I don't want to crash into an asteroid right now if I can help it, but I do want all of my power-ups, and I do want my free level up if I can get it. If I have to take some damage, that's fine. I don't mind taking damage to get a free power-up. That right there is a power-up container, and I did grab it in time, so we're invulnerable for a second. That's really, really good. I could use some invulnerability right now. There we go. Just refract all over these kids. Yup. There we go. Give me the XP. Uh, let's go ahead and I'm going to keep working on... Let's get Ray Palm upgraded a little bit. I think that's a solid place to start. I am going to need like some kind of backup here pretty soon. I do think our density of fire is going to have to get a little bit better because the screen is only going to get busier from here. I'm going to go around right there. I almost kind of killed myself going after that XP. Uh, we do have an armor recharge right there. I would recommend that we pick it up. We kind of want to play this frontal position a little bit too. Come on. Give me an opening here. I think... Oh, I thought I could sneak behind. I was wrong. I was wrong. Okay, uh, let's go for recharge time on our death ray. There we go. Pull those on in there. Perfect. Things are looking okay. I don't hate the position we find ourselves in right now. I don't like these little chase ships, though. I like to get rid of them early. We are taking a little bit of damage. Our HP is in the bottom left corner, in case you didn't notice it as of right now. We just dropped a nuclear weapon on them, because who doesn't love dropping nuclear weapons on your enemy in space? Why not? Let's turn this, you know, if they want to make this into a, into a firepower measuring contest, I think I'm going to win. That's just my opinion about the situation. But I really, really, really like the functionality of the weapons in this game, how everything is positional, and how everything has kind of like a medium cycle time. It, it sort of affects like when you're playing with the gun lock, you're going to end up circling enemies a lot more, trying to effectively like lasso them uh, with your target lock. And it, it just makes you move in interesting ways. 
and then you kind of combo that with other stuff, and it just turns out like, mwah. This is a very, very unique game that's actually firing on a lot of very, 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 uh, I think, innovative cylinders. I think really at the moment, my only true complaint with the game is that I don't like that they went with 8-bit for the sound effects and for the soundtrack. Now, normally I'm a big fan of chiptunes, uh, but in this game it just feels like the audio and the sound could be a little bit more Kenny Loggins, a little bit more punched up, a little bit more intense, you know what I mean? Like, they've got the chiptunes in there, but when it comes to me personally, uh, I like it when my chiptunes are more, you know... Dr. Wily's Castle and Mega Man 2, just like the very heavy metal inspired stuff. Alright, so we got better sideline damage and the beam gets bigger, so that might be nice. Let's go ahead and do that. That might work out okay. Uh, we are currently invulnerable, so we should get very, very aggressive with our locks. There we go. Perfect. It is getting a little bit more hectic in here. There is a lot of stuff happening, but what I do like about this game is that it's very, very active. Uh, one thing that you run into sometimes with a lot of like these survivor-like games is that once you get to a certain point, you can kind of sit still and it like auto-clears the map itself. This game has struck a very nice balance, in my opinion, between letting you feel powerful, but also still forcing you to kind of move, basically. Um, there, there has not been any point so far in playing this game for the two or three hours that I've put into it where I felt like I could just sit in a corner and let my weapons wipe everything before it even gets to me. But the tricky thing there is I still feel like my builds are strong and I still feel like I'm killing a lot of stuff on screen and like I'm making some kind of headway against the enemy advance. And I actually think that's probably more of a delicate process than most of us would consider when playing a game like this. Making it so that you still have to dodge, but you still feel strong. Uh, those are two very, very divergent ideas um, that can be kind of hard to meld together, I would guess. Uh, we can upgrade our light rail again, and this is going to take it up to max level. So it's going to have faster recharge time, 75%. Targeting speed, infinite range, targeting beam and attack are 200% wider. When it destroys a target, the recharge is reduced by 25%. And so there you go. This is basically like the evolved version of our light rail, and I think it's going to help out quite a bit. And the good news is we got it very, very early on in our run. So I'm feeling very, very fortunate right now. Hopefully we can destroy it. Well, I didn't get to destroy the meteor. I was hoping I could destroy the meteor, but... Or the asteroid, but it didn't happen like that. Now we're starting to get into the nitty-gritty chaos. Give me a nice little sweep right there with the gun lock. We actually did not grab anything, and also I took damage. So that was the opposite level of success that I was going for. Another Hive Queen has arrived. Let's go ahead and bury her real fast. Come on. Oh, I'm about to get plasmid. Uh, make sure you give... Make sure you respect the Hive Queen. Don't get too close when you destroy the little orbs that are rotating around her, uh, you will regret it. Uh, it will hurt. Not bad, not bad, not bad. I think I just took damage right there, though, from a Plasma Blast. I do think that player hit feedback could be a tiny bit better and a tiny bit punched up, just to make it more apparent when you're taking damage. I don't even pay attention in this game at this point as to whether or not I'm taking damage. I just do my best, and if the level ends, I assume that I won. There we go. Get that incremental repair going right there. I did miss I did miss a pod that might have potentially had upgrades or something inside of it, but I guess that's life. But yeah, I think they're onto something with this game. Uh, I think they are definitely in a very strong position with regards to this early access. I think with some punched up sound effects and kind of like a punched up soundtrack and some boss variety, uh, those are the additions that... I personally feel while playing the game would go the furthest towards making the experience uh, a little a, a little bit better a little bit more satisfying by no means are they necessary the game because really are the mechanics fun yes the mechanics are fun this is a very very fun game uh, let's go for I'd actually like to level up something else let's go for a reroll yeah, sideline sounds good. I've actually never maxed out sideline, so I'm kind of curious about what a maxed out sideline is actually going to do. About five minutes left on the clock until we're out of this level. 
Hey, our drone spawned. Nice. The little yellow guy in the middle of the screen that's murdering everything right now. Basically, he just wildly fires bullets in every direction, and as someone that plays orcs in Warhammer 40k and prefers orcs and more DACA, I am in full support of any drone that makes that its modus operandi. Just find the enemy and fire wildly in every direction. Oh, took a little purple bullet right there. It's okay. We'll bounce back. There's going to be plenty of pickups before we get to the boss. I need to knock out his shield. I need to knock out his shield. There we go. Let me get all that XP right there. Uh, the level ups are going to slow down pretty tremendously as you get towards the back end of a run. That's just been my experience anyways. I'm running out of road here. There we go. I was running out of road, and I needed to get back and pick up the stuff in the center of the screen. We do have an upgrade pod right there, and it did drop a repairer, so I definitely want that. We're going to try and knock out his shield real quick without turning on the plasma bombs. Okay, we're looking all right. We're looking all right. We're looking all right. Everything's good. The game can be a little bit tense in case you hadn't noticed. I can't express to you how hard it is to play this kind of game while also doing dialogue live. Uh, which is precisely what's happening right now. What did we upgrade? Our gun lock? Okay, good. That means we can acquire more targets, and it fires probably quicker. Hey, there's our sideline level 5. It looks like it just makes the beam width 50% larger. I don't know how I feel about that. I was hoping maybe it would, like, triple fire or something. Just pachoo, pachoo, pachoo. But okay, alright. Uh, we are officially now maxed out on our sideline cannon. Uh, God, no! Okay, yep, all right, fair enough. I am becoming uh, whelmed in the over direction right now, I think, is the way that I would put it. Perfect. Our drone has been deployed, so he's now firing bullets in random directions while screaming, ah, in like Microsoft Steve voice. We are now invulnerable, so we want to get a big gun lock off right there. Oh boy. It is getting frenetic in here. That is the word that I would use to describe it. Oh my. Good lord. Okay, alright, just breathe, just breathe. It's just a video game. It's not that big of a deal. You don't have to win on camera. The entire internet is not judging you right now. Nobody's even watching this at all. You're in your office by yourself. You haven't even rendered and edited this yet. Uh, we can take our gun lock up to level four. Yeah, let's take a gun lock up to level four. That'll give us a little bit more range to play around with, I think. There we go. Wipe some of these nerds out in space. Oh, barely snuck in between those bullets right there. They almost got me. I mean, they almost shut me down, man. I almost got took out. Yeah, give me another invulnerability right there. Perfect. Just lock on to everything you possibly can. And as you can see, while the gun lock, it starts out kind of like, eh, this isn't very fun. Uh, by the time you get further on into the game, the gun lock becomes very, very, very fun to deploy. I, I really like the sort of lassoing, like, whippet gameplay that you get out of the gun lock. In my opinion, it's one of the most entertaining weapons in the game. And in fact, it's probably my favorite, even though I'm not as good with it as I am with, like, the beam weapons and whatnot. I got shot. I'm gonna tell my mom on you. You're not gonna be invited to my birthday party because you shot me. There we go, nuclear detonation, clean up the screen a little bit, give me some free XP out here. Yurt, yurt, yurt. I need to get rid of all these landmines over here too. Perfect. Oh, okay, yeah, I'm starting to lose some HP out here. I might be getting a little bit too aggressive in the way that I'm beefing with the enemy. Oh. Yeah, I definitely need that. Oh, the Hive Queen's back. Oh, we're at 15 minutes. This is the final boss of the level, so we've got to fight the same boss that we fought previously just twice. A boss so nice, they gave her to us twice. I would suggest that we focus on one of them rather than spreading our damage around. Like, by all means, if we end up in a situation 
where our drone or whatever is damaging one boss on one side, that's fine. I can't really control that, but I don't know what power-up I was going to get out of there. Oh, we've got the... It makes all of our guns fire like machine guns. Uh, there are some very, very fun pickups in this game. Uh, there are pickups that basically give your guns, like, no cooldown. Uh, so they're just like, and like blow up the entire screen. Uh, that's my favorite pickup in the entire game. We've got one Hive Queen down here. I'm going to go pick up the armor repairs. We're going to try to get some damage off on this one. Okay, we're looking pretty good. We're looking pretty good. I think we're probably out of here, would be my guess. Oop, I set up too far forward. You really want to have some kind of weapon that fires at a long range by the time you go up against the Hive Queen. Uh, because when her little drones spawn all around her, or little booby traps or whatever they are, uh, they will deal damage to you instantly. There's no, there's no vetted in grace period, I promise. Perfect. Very nice. And we're out of here. We actually beat the level. So there it is. Uh, we can drop back on out to the menu, and we can see that if we unlocked anything, I don't know if we actually did. One thing I would highly recommend that they add is that it's hard to keep track of your unlocks. At the end of a run, it would be really, really nice to have a synopsis where it's like mission complete or mission failed, and then basically icons for everything that you advanced via achievements for unlocking pop up on screen with like a good sound and then a little meter fills up underneath them to show your progress towards getting that unlock and if you get the unlock it does you know kind of like mechanical like psh, 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 sounds and then like slots them like into a thing on the side or whatever I don't know there, there's a number of things here I think they could do at the after action report that would make it a little bit more satisfying but gunlock I think the game is a really 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 good really innovative idea uh, this game is fantastic it's really good and I don't normally show off shoot 'em ups because I don't think shoot 'em ups have really done much in like the last 20 years since Ikaruga. And so anyways, my suggestions, just to recap, uh, I do think that the soundtrack and I do think that the audio for the guns and for enemies exploding could be punched up a little bit to be made a little bit more intense, a little bit more, you know, Black Sabbath, a little bit more Kenny Loggins, a little bit more punch to him, you know, push it to the limit. Like, you're, you're in a space jet fighter blowing up thousands of people. We need that rocking like, me to me to me to me in the background and the music feels a little bit laid back for that and the sound effects being 8-bit don't really have that plosive quality that gets me going with the game and gets the dopamine running through your ears and then the after action report was the other suggestion that I have where it would be nice if after a mission it told you your progress on what you actively were unlocking during that mission what successfully unlocked and how far along the stuff that did not unlock is but other than that, I think that the game is on a very, very good path. I'm excited about this early access. I think it's going to turn out to be something special. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we had Gunlocked. Tomorrow we will have something else. Thank you for hanging out with me, and that's all I got. Bye-bye, everybody.